Hello and welcome to Kikaz Brand Show. I'm Andre Minkov, the founder of Trademark Factory. And today I have a very special guest for you. Please welcome Mr. Tim Gillette. He is the creator of the simple, easy marketing and branding. Ever wondered how you can market your business online and get results faster? Well, that's what Tim does. He has been creating and recreating small to medium-sized businesses for decades, including close to 20 years in the car wash and auto body industry. Tim is an award-winning blogger, best-selling author, speaker, and creator of not one, not two, not three, over 20 online blogs. Tim combines his storytelling and copywriting skills to help online marketers use blogging, live video to build a successful online business at his three-day blog and video con in Dallas, Texas every May and November. I'm actually gonna be speaking from his stage this November. So if you're anywhere near Dallas, make sure you attend. The stuff you're gonna learn from Tim is gonna blow your mind. Today, I invite you to get just a tiny sneak peek into Tim's world. Turn off all your distractions, get comfortable, you're in for a treat. Let's go. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have for you Tim Gillette. Are you really the best a man can get? Well, my wife says so. Okay. That's all that counts to me. <laughs> How often do people ask you that, I wonder? Uh, you know, I get asked that a lot, but like you, like, you know, in your industry, you should know that's a trademark phrase. Duh. Yeah, yeah. So. And you've had some interesting stories around that, I'm sure. Oh, yes, I have. I, I mean, because you got to watch it, you know what I mean? And I, I never was more aware of it until I connected with you of what you say and don't say on many <laughs> interviews now. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, okay, we'll get to that point in a, you know, in a, in a moment because I'm obviously curious about how you managed to build a business in the advertising space, in the uh, uh, internet marketing space, when there's the big elephant in the room with the same freaking name. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but before we get there, um, what I'm curious about is this, when a lot of people hear about somebody's doing internet marketing and you're, 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 the, you're specializing in videos and blogging. It's so common these days that people who can't uh, find anything better to do, they become internet marketers or so they say they're internet marketers. And you know, most of them have been doing this for a couple of months and they're like, yeah, I'm an internet marketer. That's not exactly what your story is, isn't it? No, no. And, and yeah, I, I, I joke now, you know, I, I used to use the term business coach. I don't use that because I think coach means I'm unemployed and I hang out at Starbucks on my laptop, but um, <laughs> I think that that's the, the speaker marker yeah. is, yeah, I got a laptop and I got, and I can sit at Starbucks, you know, I'm good. Uh, but no, um, it's been a journey to where I am at now. And it was, it was not one step. It was several steps along the way. I mean, I was in the auto industry. Uh, up until 2004, I've done auto body shops, car washes, car dealerships. I mean, I've owned almost all of them. I had never owned like a big, uh, you know, uh, brand new car dealership, but I've owned used car dealers and, and, and ran body shops. And uh, in Pennsylvania, before I left to move down to South and Texas, I actually had two body shops running simultaneously and a mobile car wash business all running at the same time. And ran it day and night. And, and like, uh, you know, I, I won't do that ever again. Um, <laughs> one is enough to run by yourself, hire people to do the rest. Um, here in Texas, I ran mobile car washes and it just, it finally burned me out on the auto industry. And I made the biggest mistake where I actually did learn law things was I signed a do not compete clause when I sold my business and I had to be out of the auto industry for 10 years. So I had to find another way to make a living. And I couldn't just become a consultant in the automotive field because I said, do not compete. I was out of automotive period for 10 years. 
and I had to find something. And I think that was the best thing. Whereas so many people come in now and they, they, they want to try to jump like I do. And they not realizing that, you know, you've got no history. I got a history of 10 years trying to figure this thing out as well as hundreds of thousands of dollars of working with coaches to figure it out, to get to here where I'm at now. And, and, uh, you know, the neatest thing that, you know, I, I tell a lot is it was a personal relationship with Zig Ziglar that got me into doing this. All right. And Zig actually said, Tim, you need to be a speaker and a coach. And I'm like, uh, okay, uh, what's that? I, I didn't know, didn't understand it. And Zig was, you know, he put it down in level that I could understand. And he said, speaking, that's what I do. I get up on stage and I speak to audiences. I motivate them. I inspire them. He says, you do that in the automotive industry. And he says, coaching, you've actually been in the mobile car wash in the Dallas area. I hear more stories of you helping other people in the same industry and giving them advice. He said, that's called coaching and people pay for that. And I'm like, oh, wow. I, I wished I would have known that before I put a do not compete clause in for 10 years. I could have really made a living, but you know, uh, that's how I started in this. And then like it was blogging was the first thing I did. And then I stumbled into live video, like, you know what I mean? Doing video podcasts like we're doing now in 2015 and became a hit onto it. I won't say I'm famous into it, became a hit onto it because I learned how to communicate. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's like you and you and I have had a couple of uh, great communication conversations and we learn to talk on a certain way to relate to one another. And I think that's how our relationship is being developed. But so many people out there don't know how to do that. I did. And when I turned the camera on, I just did it automatically with my audience. So I put the two together and, and that's, it's, it's, as I said, it's been a 10 year journey to get here. And uh, I still think I'm a new guy in the industry. <laughs> so. How'd you get him, you know? I used to wash his car and we went to church together. Right? So we, it was a, a church that's not that far from my house. Um, a builder friend of mine said, come to church with me on Sunday. And I did. And we're walking out of the church building uh, to go to his car. And, and he goes, Tim, hold on a second. I'm going to introduce you to somebody. So I turned around. And as I'm turning around like this, he goes, Tim Gillette, Zig Ziglar. And like, I, that's how I turned. And, and you know, I'd heard his name. You know, I mean, kind of like, you know, we hear all these famous people's names. I'd heard his name. I'd never read his books, never heard a speech or a tape or anything of his. And that's how I met him. And me, relationship guy, I just started to talk to him and, and got to know him over about three years from that moment that I met him to the moment that I sold my car wash. It was about three years time. And, and I wouldn't say we're best of, we were best of friends, but he was a huge influence and, and, and great uh, advice giver in my life. That's, that's, that's fascinating. You watch the legends car. I mean, how many of you can say that? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I've also watched, uh, over the years, I mean, I'm in the car wash industry I, in Philadelphia. I washed Eric Lindros's car from the, from the, from the Philadelphia flyers. Um, in Boston, I washed, uh, Louis Tion, the old baseball player, Louis Tion washed his car. Um, in Dallas here, I've done Troy Aikman's car. Um, you know, uh, uh, the guy, I, a couple guys from Dallas stars, you know, I, to me, they're people, <laughs> they were just customers to me. Uh, I was not a big fan like of Dallas sports. I still, until this day, I'm not a big Dallas sports fans. I am the Mavericks, the Dallas Mavericks, but the football, I could run into a Dallas cowboy and not know who he is. I just, that's just me. Um, <laughs> okay. So you decided to, uh, kind of focus on the internet marketing and the whole industry. Um, how did your experience with car washes help you running your own business and understanding the problems, you know, rather than coaching others about theirs? How does one translate into the other? <laughs> at times I wonder how they relate, but you know, at times I sit and look at um, in the car wash industry, no matter what part of the country I was in, I've ran car washes in uh, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Philadelphia, Florida, and Texas. And every one of them has challenges. And the Northeast running a car wash means six months a year, you're living off your savings. In the South, all right, it means in the spring, uh, you wash a car on Tuesday and you may be rewashing it on Thursday for free because it rained. Uh, you know, it always presented a challenge and you always had to think past 
how am I going to keep food on the table this week and keep running a business? I mean, I'm, and how am I going to keep it? And, and here in Texas, how am I going to keep food on the table for my employees? So I was always thinking of that when I sold the car wash business and I had to find another way, I want to say that was the biggest thing of discovering new things because I literally um, could walk out of a, a car wash business and go into another car business like nothing. I knew how to recreate myself in the auto industry and I'd done it so many times having to recreate my life and I couldn't go back to cars. That's where I learned a lot about marketing because now I, I, I couldn't go back to a safety net. I had to figure out a different way. And when I went into coaching, it was business coaching slash life coaching. And my first blog was called Rocker Life Coach. And I, all I did was talk about my love for rock and roll music and how it gave me life motivation. And it, it, was, it wasn't a money maker, but it was a list builder. And I learned a lot of marketing techniques when I was trying to you know, make a dollar. But in the meantime, I was building a list uh, and I built myself quite a brand, but it wasn't a brand that made me money. So it was like, you, you know what I mean? You learn by going, okay, well, that earned, that earned me two bucks this week. I need 10. Uh, what else can I do? <laughs> How did you uh, stumble into your current niche, which is very specific, um, very specific blogging and video? Um, and, I, and I think you're the only person out there who I know who puts these two together. So yeah. talk about I it. I am considering my blog and video con, I, I can label it as the number one blog and video conference in, in, in the country. In the world. In the world, actually, the too. Yeah, because no one else is doing a blog and video conference. And that's a, that's a marketing term, by the way. All right. And I, I like to give away a little secret here. It is when you have the only... You can say you're the number one because you are. <laughs> There's no number two. So you say that and it's such a marketing term. I got into this niche because it started with blogging and I was trying to do rock and roll. Uh, my second brand, I went from rocker life coach to rock and roll keys to business success. My books, my song titles were all business growth ideas and they were built around a song title. And we did a conference that was kind of marketing, but kind of systems all right, kind of motivation. And it was called the Rock and Roll Entrepreneur Conference. And, you know, it was all right. It was a three-day event that we built for from 2013 through 2015. And in 2015, I was, I was really getting frustrated with the fact that I was putting in six months of marketing to get 20 people in a room, all right, to get two clients. And two clients wasn't paying the bills. And I'm like, okay, I, I know this system works but it isn't working with this niche. And um, by that time I had been writing a blog every day and I had four blogs at the time today, till this day, I only have three now, but um, I had four blogs at the time and I, I, I got counseling and, con uh, and, and consulting from a good friend of mine, Larry Broughton out in California. And Larry and I were sitting down at a table and I said, Larry, I says, I just, I'm struggling with I, 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 this. I'm speaking. I, I don't have, I'm not a celebrity in my industry like you are, but yet I want to build a speaking business and a coaching business. And I need to know what my next step is. I need to refine this and come up with a new step. And Larry, probably the best question he said to me, he says, tell me two subjects you get asked to speak about most. And it was blogging and branding because I made a unique brand and I, and I had a blog. And I said, blogging and branding. He says, then take every other subject you do and throw it out. And now, from now on, the only thing you market is, as I speak on blogging and branding. And we did that. And, and in, in a mastermind in, in, in California, mastermind that you and I are part, both part of, Craig Gusswaltz, a, a, a lady in the group, we were coming up with a new name for it. And she said, you know, every one of your books and your stuff is all about a rock and roll song. You need to call your blogging program Rock Around Your Blog, which went you know, after the song Rock Around the Clock. I was like... I immediately went on my device and like, okay, that's available. Bought it. All right. Rockaroundyourblog.com. And we created three different programs inside of that. It was the Rock Around Your Blog uh, uh, mentorship program. The Kickstart Your Blog program was basically a Kickstarter for anybody. I, and I still have that program on file. I still give it away to everybody. It, yeah. From Kickstart Your Heart. Yep. 
Uh, and then I had uh, the, the, the um, write your way to the top, which was my tribute to Zig Ziglar. It was writing a blog post to get you to the top. So I put write your way to the top program. And I was doing very well with them. In late 2015, early 2016, um, you know what I mean? Some friends were starting to talk about using Periscope. I had a radio show, but I wasn't doing anything like live stream video. They're talking about Periscope and Meerkat. And this new monkey came along called Blab. And like everybody was talking about it. So I literally was sitting on my couch one night waiting for my wife to get home. I was going to go pick her up from the airport. And I looked on my phone and I downloaded the app for Blab. And I'm like, let me try this. And then within literally within a minute and a half of being on the program, on the, the app part of it, I was in a live stream video with Michael Hyatt. I, I, <laughs> because he was doing a, a thing on a program he was doing and I had an interesting question about it. So I basically submitted to jump on camera. I jumped on camera, asked my question about it. And then I said, you know, Michael Hyatt, I've been trying to reach out to you for years to get you on my podcast. Can I do that? And he said, sure, send me an email and we'll see what we can do. I mean, I, I never orchestrated it, but that was the start of me getting on live stream video. That was a Friday night. Um, my wife left to travel again on Sunday night. So Sunday night, I hopped back on again and found some interesting subjects in different live stream videos. And I just would jump on by Monday night. I had a following of a thousand people and I, I just come up with this idea on there. You know what? I'm just going to try to get, cause you, you had four squares and you got to be on video. And I said, I'm going to get on a thousand different or a hundred different shows in 30 days. I'm not going to get on to sell. I'm just going to go on and try to see if I can add value to their show. All right. And then I got within 30 days, I had like 2,500 followers on this platform. And I'm like, that's faster than I ever grew my blog. I'm like, what's up with this? So then I started a series of my rock around your blog shows. And I was doing them every night on there. I had 48 total shows when Blab shut down. Uh, you know what I mean? I lost over half of them. I still have some of them and they're on my YouTube channel. But like, I, I, it was a, a whole unique area that I built a relationship with people real fast. That was a great platform. It, it was. was an amazing platform. So, and I am, Did you, I, I, do you know why it shut down? It shut down in 2016, like August. Why? Uh, because of the fact it was a company, uh, that Bebo, and they were, it was a test platform. And it really was, ne they never had a monetization plan. They were just testing something and, and it, it caught, caught on as the test caught on and, and it went viral. So, and, and it had its problems. And when the, it, the problems got to be too much, they had another project they were working on. So they shut the problem down and they went on to work on their other project. Um, and one of the things that people don't know is, is on Blab, there was a whole thing on there. It was a how to be Blab official. And it was this green check mark next to people's names. So, um, one of the things I did on there was the check mark. There was a green check mark that people had next to their name, and we were calling ourselves Blab Official. Mm. And we started this whole fear of missing out thing on becoming Blab Official. Right. I created a Blab about it, which went viral. Then I created a, like a sales video, training video on it and how to do it. And basically at the end, it said, hey, just add this green emoji next to your name and you're Blab Official. <laughs> but Sean from Bebo called me and he goes, Tim. I have to ask you to stop. And I'm like, it's innocent. We're not, we're not harming anybody. We're not doing anything wrong. I, I don't mean to offend you, but, but why? And he said, Tim, I get 2,800 emails a day. It's tying up my email box over this thing that isn't true. And I realize it's funny. And then he says, it is funny. It's funny as hell, but now it's affecting my business. So can you stop? And I said, okay. I said, Sean, I will stop. I, 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 you got my word. I'll stop. But it's my claim to fame. It's like it, it started out as a, as a publicity stunt that went viral in a way mm. on a platform that most people know me for. And when Blab shut down, um, I, you know, a lot, everybody kind of went their separate ways with different things. And it really, it opened up a lot of other platforms. But now everybody keeps wondering where I went. Well, one of the things I learned from it was, is I quit marketing to the masses and I do things to get the people who, to, to get them to come to my list and I market to my list. So I don't give out all of my trainings. Like today I wrote for my, my list. I wrote, I actually wrote three trainings I'm going to do for my inner circle that I will record tonight. I don't 
put them out for the masses. And that's what I did on Blab was I was doing it for the masses. Uh, so I started to learn to restrict that. Well, I, I stopped doing my other conference in 2015. And in 2018, uh, working with Craig Duswalt, my, my coach, I joined his elite program. And I said, you know, I want to do a conference, but I want to do a blog con thing in Dallas. And Craig said, Tim, you need to do blog and video. No one's doing blog and video. And you're known for more than just blogs. He said, you're known for this live streaming thing. And you really relate with audiences. And he says, there's secrets that, that he said to me, and you know, Craig is a master of marketing, first of all. He says, there's secrets that you're putting out there that even I didn't know. You know what I mean? And, and Craig, if you, you watch Craig, you know, we watch our mentor quite a bit, you do too. As, as a, he's studying the video stuff. Whereas it's me, I get on a camera and it's natural for me because I learned things that how to speak in marketing terms so I can make my videos very, very interactive, very, very fast. So Craig's studying that and he goes, he's, he's like, I have to study it. You know how to naturally do it. You need, you need to just work with that. Um, so I said, okay, we'll do blog and video con. And I know like within a month of creating it, we had the logo up and everything. And a month of creating it, I seen you and I'm like, hey, can we trademark this? And, and you're like, no, really you can't, but it's a great idea. I like the way you're thinking. Let's move with something else. I liked how you did that to me. And I'm like, well, that knocked me down, but still, Everybody said, still, you have one of the most unique conferences because it is centered around both blogging and video, and it really is internet marketing, but it's internet marketing with a long-term plan. Most internet marketers are internet marketing with a short-term plan. They're trying to say, they're, they're basically teaching get rich quick on internet marketing. I'm not. I'm not teaching get rich quick. I'm, getting, I'm teaching be successful long-term. I hate that term, get rich quick. I won't ever label myself with it. So. Yeah. So that's about how I got into blog and video. So that's how I got into that, that, that kind of niche. All right. Enough about you. <laughs> uh, let me ask you this. So as you've grown and you saw some of the things that worked and some of the things that didn't, mm -hmm. uh, and you learn from some of the things that didn't, uh, so you do less things that don't work and more things that do work. Mm -hmm. uh, what, in your opinion, are five biggest mistakes that people do with their marketing or expect from their marketing uh, without understanding that what they're doing just makes no sense? So often, I think what people do is, 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 is they don't realize what they're doing when they, when they talk to in their marketing, how to talk. Number one, they're actually putting out there with uh, they're, they're looking at, like, I'm looking at the cameras, I'm talking to you. Your picture is over here. <laughs> I'm looking at the camera. Most people will not give eye contact to a camera when they're talking. Marketing 101, they've got to see your eyes. When people can see your eyes in the internet marketing world, they're going to believe you faster. That's the first thing that I tell people. Number two is, is it kind of relates into number one is, it's not about me. Yes, you asked me about my story. My story is not your success. Your success is learning how to tell. A lot of times I learn to tell stories and you need to learn to tell your stories to put you in my story. My story with Zig Ziglar is a very unique story. You have one too. It may not be Zig Ziglar, but there is something so unique about you that you tell it, it grabs their attention. Now you switch and you actually want to tell people how they can be successful. Me and Zig Ziglar, this much of my success, ladies and gentlemen. Zig was a great guy, but it's this much of my success. The whole marketing is, I don't know if I can do it on camera. It's, it's bigger than that. And this is only one little piece in here. You have that one little piece of story there that's going to attract, but the words and the, and the things you do are way outside of that. Once you get them to come to that story, you've got to get them placed to come out. I always say on the camera, you know, and at my event, we do blog and video con. The first thing I say is number one, there's nothing new under the sun. It's been done before. The key that you have to learn is how you can get those people you talk to, to listen to you talking to them about them. I hope this that doesn't good. confuse you. Oh, this is good. Say it again. You've got to talk to them and make the things that you're telling about you about them 
and that's how you've got to get it to relate. So right now, all right, I want you, I, I would normally take that story that I told right there about Zig, and I would say, imagine you're walking out of a church, a friend of yours you just met, and he says, hold on a second, I want to introduce you to somebody. Turn around a second, and you turn around, and your hand grabs the hand of Zig Ziglar. How do you feel? That's taking the same story I just told you, Andre, and actually putting it in marketing terms. Yeah, and making it about me. It's about you, not me. Yes, yeah. that story happened to me. And you have a story in your life somewhere that is so unique like that. But when you can learn to tell it in that fashion, you are going to get unbelievable people going, oh, wow. So uh, one of the things we teach at Blog and Video Con is we go through a whole thing on, on doing sales copy. So we'll move into another one here. Sales copy, some of the very things that we learn over the years about sales copy. Number one, always give a damaging omission. Always I tell people something bad that I don't want them to do. Immediately what that does is that now tells you that if I, I, I said it earlier, I don't like good get rich quick. As a matter of fact, you read through some of the bios of my stuff online, it says I do not work with get rich quick. It's a damaging admission. I immediately shut you down if you're looking for one thing that I don't do. Mm -hmm. If I came to Andre, if I came to you and I said, hey, Andre, I need you to be my, my, you know, uh, my family attorney here in Dallas, Texas. I'm sure you know the law and I'm sure you could be my attorney, mm -hmm. but it's not your niche. No. So immediately you would say, yes, I am not a lawyer. I know, and I know your story a little bit. You know what I mean? Yes, I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a lawyer, Tim. That's not what I do you're automatically going and helping people in your online marketing is to start by getting rid of the people you don't want to work with, getting rid of the people who are going to come up and ask you a million questions about something you don't specialize in. You actually specialize and count on three things, specialize in three things and like turn off everybody that doesn't fit in there. So let me give you one that's really most people never do. All right. And internet marketing. They're scared to do this one. Everything you do needs to have a call to action. That doesn't mean, hey, buy my book today. It's only $97 every time. That very easily can mean this. And this is a call to action that I'm going to actually make right now that I'm going to show you how it works. Is If you're enjoying this podcast right now, and maybe you don't know my friend Andre over here, what you need to do is there's a subscribe button down there. If you click it, you can see Andre's next podcast. That way, I just gave a sale. I, I gave a sale, a call to action. All right. If I was showing this to my audience, I now told my audience to follow you. And that's a call to action. Does that benefit me? Heck yeah, it benefits me because my audience already knows me. If I'm doing a, a broadcast where I'm interviewing you, I want to make sure they subscribe to you. That's the call to action. I do a very, a very lot of call to actions on my live stream videos. And all the time, if I'm not trying to do something like get them to buy a ticket to blog in video con, it's usually I have. Which some by the way, they which, should Which by do. the way, you're speaking. <laughs> and um, which, which by the way, they should attend in yeah, November. You should be there. I'm Dallas. just telling you if, you, if you come from this, by the way, here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a neat call to action. You mm -hmm. come from this podcast. All right. Andre and I will have dinner with you for the first person who buys from this podcast moment. Boom. Well, create a link so we can track yeah, it. We should do that in a link. Uh, <laughs> but only one. Yes. Uh, anyway, but a call to action can be very simple. And I do it on mine all the time. I have a website. I do this thing with simple, easy marketing, which you're helping me trademark is I have this thing where I own the, tr I own the website, simpleeasybranding.com. And I always say sometimes three or four times, Hey, listen, I'm using the simple, easy branding process. If you want to find out more about how simple, easy marketing and branding works, go to simpleeasybranding.com. I've got a free tutorial there for you to watch. It's only 20 minutes long. There's no opt-in to see it. It's free for you to watch. All right. Check it out and see if it works for you. The process is really simple. I just gave you a call to action. All right. If you go to that sales page, great. If you don't, great. All I do is offer it. And I offer it on almost all of that, all the times you do a training or you do something online, train them, teach them, inform them, educate them, empower them, and give them some place to go. Don't hard sell them, lightly suggest it.
That is internet marketing. I told this, I was telling this on Nancy Matthews broadcast when I was doing it for her a couple of weeks ago. She's our other featured speaker. Um, and I said this and Nancy never heard this. And I said, all of my sales pages, not one, not, well, blog and video cons a little bit different because that's a page, it's an event page, it's not a sales page, but all of my sales pages, none of them are offering a sale. None. What are they offering? An opt-in. All of them are trying to get you to opt into a list. When you click the opt-in button and you click the submit, add my name and email, sure, let, put me on your list, Tim. It now goes to a thank you page. The thank you page has another short 10 minute training and it says right at the top of it, an email will be in your inbox in 10 minutes. Thank Meanwhile, you. Meanwhile, watch up. the video. In yeah. the meantime, watch this quick 10 minute training I decided to make for you as a bonus. Guess what that sales page does? Offers you a discount to something. Some mm -hmm. program I'm doing, some event I'm doing. Now I'm offering you a training and at the end of that, I make a sale. I have given you value twice before I asked for $1 from you. Yeah. That's internet marketing, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. <laughs> How's that for some five tips? Does that work for you? It works perfectly. Yeah. Uh, so you worked with a few brands out there, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a kick-ass brand show. And the question I always ask is, what do you think makes a brand kick-ass? You know, I, I've worked for, so you guys know, is I've worked for Midas Muffler. I've worked for the Penske family over the years. Uh, I've worked for the New York Times. Um, and I've watched an awful lot in, say, TV, news, and politics. And I want to say kick-ass brands is someone who actually knows how to market themselves and can take it, positive or negative, and turn it into money. Gene Simmons. Perfect example. He said it, I don't know how many times he said it is, all publicity is good publicity. All right. And whether you like, uh, you know, I know you're in Canada, whether you like the, the, the president we have down here in the lower 48 or not, all right, that man has learned to make money and make himself more successful from lovers and haters. I don't know how he's building his brands by creating lovers and haters and it just builds his brand bigger and bigger. But that's what we mean on that concept. If you can build your brand where you've got enemies who build your brand, and friends who build your brand, you've got a kick-ass brand. It's, well, it, it's, un, it's unknockdownable, you know? The one thing that it's not going to build your brand yeah. is people not giving a shit about it. Right? Good point. It's, it's, the, it's the people who are wishy-washy, who have no opinion about you, which is why exactly you want haters and you want fans. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and, you know, I, we, we have a sales, we have a, a sales funnel running with my Facebook ads, the gentleman who's does my ads for me. Mm -hmm. And someone actually made a comment and Facebook blocked the comment because of what he said. And it was a negative comment, mm. but I didn't block it. Facebook did because of the fact he used words that are, are not politically correct. Mm. Um, and Facebook blocked it, but I got to see the comment and I'm like, but he still liked my post. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I don't care if it comes up. You know what I mean? That, that the guy thinks such and such about me. All right. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? It's like the, the, the Craig Duswalt said a couple of years ago when he was doing, he was doing his one book and he, it was about his stories with guns and roses or whatever. And like Axel was mad. Axel Rose was mad at him and said, I'm going to tell everybody at my concerts not to buy your book. And Craig's like, please do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like sometimes the enemy thing will actually feed more. But if you're neutral ground, greatest, greatest point you made about this, Andre, if you're neutral ground, all right, it's an old wise saying from an old wise book, all right, you know what I mean, called the Bible, is if you're, if you're uh, uh, lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out. I prefer that you were either hot or cold. That is what makes a brand kick ass, hot or cold. You are going to have people who come up and like it, and people who go up and don't like it. And I don't care whether you like it or don't like it but I'm going to make it bold. And we actually had a, this conversation with uh, another fellow at the mastermind. Uh, what was it? A week ago, two weeks ago. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to name names or I'm going to name his brand. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, he was trying to figure out 
uh, his audience is basically people who, uh, who love Trump and people mm -hmm. who love America. Uh, and he was asking advice from people who don't. Yeah. And he was trying to come up with a, a brand that everyone would love, everyone in the room would love. And in the end of the day, it was, it was just, you know, wishy-washy something that means nothing to nobody. Yeah. And then when we had this conversation with him, I said, you don't want people to like you. What yeah. you want is people to love or hate you. Yeah. Uh, and then he said, right, right. And he went back to, uh, to the brand he was thinking about originally because that had power in it, mm -hmm. right? And the, the other one just like, was okay. It was, it could be anything. It could be selling, you know, it could be about everything and anything. And mm -hmm. uh, that's not the brand you want to have. Would you agree with that? Yes, I totally agree with that. And, and, and you look at like even the, uh, you, you look at like the, the and I, I hate to be all politics on this, but you look at political campaigns. I've watched them because I watched how they, they label themselves. Mm. And I've watched like, you know, uh, you know, over the past 15 years, I've been watching very intensely. I've been watching uh, politics and I watched how someone will run on something and they'll make their tagline one thing. And I'm like, there's nobody going to get behind that. And there's also nobody that's going to hate that. And you, that's what you got to do. There's, there's people, you know what I mean? Right now we're getting in, in the, in the political season here and there are people who are putting up statements that the other side hates right now. And that is what is going to help build a, 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 a platform for them. They know that the statements they're making probably are never going to get true, become true, but they know by making those statements, they're going to build a following. Yeah. So. Because they're, because they're taking a stand. Yes. Yep. And that is going to make the most kick-ass brand out there. And when you make a, a kick-ass statement, and um, I know years ago, you know, I, I, I have a friend in, in California who uses an awful lot of language in his, in his speaking, and it works for him. All right? His, his brand is built on that. It turns people off, but it attracts the people he wants. So he does it. And, you know what I mean, some of us can do that in the speaking world. Some of us can't. All right. And that's a brand builder right there is going out and being able to boldly be yourself, but yet, you know what I mean? Do it so that you attract the people you want to work with. Tell us the story about uh, Gillette, or the letter that you got. So last year I decided to buy Gillette.live um, because it's a, a new domain dot things dot live. And it was a premier name. Should have been my first clue. Don't buy premier names unless you know you can use them, by the way. <laughs> so I was trying to do it and I was going to label my company Gillette. It's, it's Tim Gillette Media, but I was going to label it Gillette Media. And we started to go after things on this on Gillette Media. And this was only one of two things I got shut down on last year and literally got a statement because we made this things like we made the thing on Gillette. I can't use the name Gillette because it is, because it is trademarked. You can use Tim Gillette. Can't touch me on Tim Gillette, all right? But they can touch me on the word Gillette. And like you were telling me, well, you know, they're in razors. Yeah, they are. But for some reason or another, the name is trademarked. And for some reason or another, they can play. They have a bigger bank account, first of all, I think what it is. And basically, I can be right and they can be right. And basically, they can make me broke. <laughs> That's so a great went, way to put it. Yeah, I, I basically went, you know what? I can deal with Tim Gillette. I'm okay with that. All right. And uh, the other one I had was like when I first came to you uh, was is we're, we were going to do this other thing on, on marketing and we were going to do stupid, easy marketing. And I had been saying the line stupid, easy for years. And someone brought it up and said, listen, you need to use that and, and make that your brand. So I immediately bought all the domains and I was shocked that they all were available to tell you the truth mm -hmm. and found out that someone trademarked the name stupid, easy in the marketing category. And I was like, whoa. And literally, I got a letter from him saying, and his, was, his was kind. His wasn't like Gillette, all right? His was nice. Hey, uh, Tim, uh, I know you don't know me, but my friend told me you're kind of using my trademark. And I, I'm, fr I'm friends with him on Facebook, connected to him, and, and watched some of his stuff. He watches mine now. Uh, and I literally, I reached out to him immediately and said, I'm sorry. I will take it down. I'm going to find another route. And then when we put up a Simple Easy, he's been one of the coolest fans of it because – what I was going to do in Stupid Easy is what I'm still doing, but with the word Simple Easy, his 
is a design process a different way than what we do. And I got to admire what he did is brilliant. All right. But he trademarked it in a way to make his process unique in a trademark and unique in a concept. So you got to go after those people who do it right. And you got to admire them. Um, but don't step on them. All right. Don't be mean to them. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to be mean to the Gillette people, but you know, Hey, it, they, they had a business trademark long before I was born. Yeah. And I mean, look, if, if, if they allow everyone to start their Gillette companies yeah. that do different things, you know, a few years, you look a few years back, there's going to be very little residual value in the brand. Yeah. So they have to shut down people like you. It's not just about, you know, the, whether there is a legal, legal requirement mm -hmm. to fight everyone that really isn't, not to the extent that people usually say, but uh, there is just a common sense requirement. You want to make sure that there's something left to you uh, to own that brand. Yeah. And it's why we, it's why, you know what I mean? You and I are, you know, in some of our early conferences, we're all about, you know what I mean? Tim, you got to get something you own, you know? And I wanted to get something that I own. So that basically when it comes down to it, I own it. All right. No one can come by and take that from me because I own it. We've gone through the proper legitimate channels, just like Gillette did mm -hmm. to get theirs. I'm going through those same channels to get mine. And that's what you've got to do in this world. And then you, once you get your own, you're going to respect others who have it. Cause it's a process. All right. And you know, we've got a great team. You guys got a great team over there. It's helping me, but you know what I mean? It's, it's still got its headaches to it and it's still a nerve wracking. Okay. I, there's days I, I was going like this, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Gillette went through that too. You just and made, you respect him for it. You just made such a great point. I think it, you're the first person who ever brought it up that once you own something, you respect others who own the same thing. Yeah. This is so good. This is deep. Yeah, it is. And it, it, it's true. You know what I mean? You know, it's like yours, Trademark Factory. I mean, I can't, you know, that's a, a wonderful name. It is a mm -hmm. brand that tells people I need to call to you because basically you're going to run this sucker and get it done. Yep. All right. And you own it. Um, and I've, you know, you and I have watched people online, you know, who, when I actually recommended you, someone come on and went like, you know what I mean? They tried to the shovel dirt on your trademark. I'm like, Obviously, you're not in the same things because you don't respect the fact that you guys do the same thing, but he labeled his, and apparently you haven't come up with a label for yours. Mm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. That's why they don't respect it. You know what I mean? Me seeing someone else who's gotten gone through the process, I've got tremendous respect for them. Mm -hmm. They went through the process. They aren't earned that. You know what I mean? And take that, let's take that outside of internet marketing, guys, just for a little bit. Uh, a couple of years ago, my friend Craig had a gentleman speak at his event who I highly don't like. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say his name, all right, but I'm going to tell you this. I had to deal with that guy because I worked the back room a lot at Craig's event. Mm -hmm. And I had to have a lot of conversations with him. I had to do things to help him and part of it. And I really don't like this guy. Right. But while I was there, he had some of his, his trainees and his coaching clients with him. So every time I, I dealt with him, I showed him utmost respect. I may not like him, but he's earned the respect from those people. And I don't need to come and tear it down. He earned that. When you learn how he's earned that, even though I don't like him, you learn to respect it. Same is true in trademarks. I have went through the process to get it. So I pray that you respect me. When I see you've got a trademark and I accidentally stepped onto it. Oh my gosh, am I going to pull my stuff down? Because I want your respect from me. All right if the tables were turned. So I'm gonna respect you. This is good, I, I, I'm loving this conversation. You know, this is why a lot of people who, who I, whom I interview, like to send me the questions in advance, send me the questions in advance. I'm like, I don't wanna send you questions in advance because it's the conversations like this that generate the best stories, that generate the best answers and that generate the best wisdom. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad uh, that you are here to share it. Um, so before I let you go, and before we leave people with a call to action, of course, to uh, go and see the conference uh, and learn from you at the conference, blog and VidCon, uh, before we do all that, I want you to say, to tell me this, this. So in your entire 
career, uh, what is the three things? Now, what are the three things you wish you had done differently? I wished, um, one of the things that the first thing I wished I would have done was, is like, I, I, I hired a very successful coach, um, three years into it. I wished I'd have done that in day one. All right. And I would have had to borrow money against credit cards, which I ended up borrowing money against credit cards to do things without knowing. And I basically could have spent the, at that time it would be about, it would have been about 7,500 bucks would have gotten me a lot further along spending it there rather than spending $7,500 on credit cards, try to figure it out. All right. I wished I would have done that. The second thing is, is two things I did one that I, that I did wished I wouldn't have done in, in the beginning days of my business is I, I bought a $50,000 Harley Davidson that I wanted. My wife and I had another business. My wife and I, had, my wife had a large income. All right. So we could afford it, but I wished I would have waited. All right. There was another one that came out that would have looked just as cool. All right. Had I waited a couple more years. Um, I wished I would have not have bought toys along the way. I bought toys. They were a great part of my life and they were a great part of my brand for a while. But those toys set me back financially on areas I could have spent money to build my business. I wished I wouldn't have bought toys. And number three, just in the past three years, I've started doing this is I started putting money into advertising. And I'm talking like Facebook ads, Google ads, all right, to actually learn to test things. All right. I was on a call with John Limbach or another friend of ours today. And John actually talked about this. You know, those people who want to be successful online, if you need money fast, SEO isn't for you. You've got to run ads. But if you want to start building long-term, you're going to write SEO stuff. So it builds over time. And he talked about that idea of advertising. And he said, you want to run a campaign, run it in a, run ads to test it. So you basically come up with the numbers. I got a hundred people to view it. 25 people did this, 10 people did this. So you know it and you run the ads to test it. So now you can go out to a larger network of people. I come out and I say, hey, Andre, this worked and here's the test of how it works. Can we tap into your list with it now? All right, and I'm going to pay you this much if, if we get from your list. It now shows tests. I wished, I wished I would have started doing advertising back in 2012 with Google ads and things like that when I first got my websites to test. Instead, I tried to do everything for free and it took me longer to build the process. Well, let me turn the knife a little bit. Back in 2012, just think of how many times cheaper it was to run paid ads yeah. on Facebook and Google. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, so the early days, you know, the early days of, of running ads back then would have gotten me like 20 times the results for the money I spend now. Yeah. And I know friends who did run ads and they built a brand really quickly using, using like Facebook and YouTube ads. All right. But had I done it the same amount of money, I would be 10 times further than I am now. Right. So. Is there a question that you wish I had asked, but I didn't, but you really want to answer it? Um, <laughs> yeah. What do I have on the TV right now? Shark Tank. <laughs> Shark Tank is playing over here and I, I'm, I, the volume's down, but it's, it's shows like that that I use to inspire me. As I watch my TV as Shark Tank, right now Undercover Billionaire is a television show I watch. Mm -hmm. I watch commercials. I, I watch HTV, HGTV and I watch the commercials and, and then I watch like CNBC and watch the commercials and that, that teaches me how to write ads and the content teaches me about how to build my business. So, you know, people always say, what motivates you? I watch things that most people would go like, uh, no, I'd rather watch Big Bang Theory. Great. I love watching Big Bang Theory, but it doesn't teach me anything about building my business. Right. This does. Awesome. That's a great end. So where do people go to sign up for the conference? When is the conference? Tell us all about it. So I do the blog and video con. Blog, the word and video con c o n dot com and i do it twice a year next one we have coming up is november 7th 8th 9th is at the time of this broadcast if you're seeing this past 2019 you got to go to that website to find the next date all right i know some of you are going to wait till january to watch this podcast why you waited that long i don't know andre puts them out on a regular basis you need to watch them on a regular basis 
Just saying. Uh, but we're going to do this in November, November 7th, 8th, 9th. We're in Dallas, Texas. We have a, a really unique center, all right, next to a wonderful uh, music venue, next to a convention center, tons of freaking places that you can go eat at, all right, and a hotel that is so unique that actually has great decorations on the wall. But better than that, all right, I've put together one of the most awesome conferences this time because it's built around the subject of using social media, video, and blogging. I'm going to tell you why. Number one, of course, our mentor, a guy we both work with, Craig Duswalt, one of my fe featured speakers, going to do a whole new speech that he hasn't done before, all right, at my conference because he's changing his brand. So I get to see a new version of my mentor and you get to see it too. Number two, I've got Nancy Matthews. She's going to teach you about speaking and how to get on stages. She runs events and she does this whole philosophy called the one philosophy. All right. Every person you meet, you need to treat them like they're the one. All right. Unique. She has uh, Women's Prosperity Network, very successful team of people down in the South in Florida. And I've got her coming. She is so I, I'm inspired that she's going to be on my stage, first of all. Next, I've got Paul Fink. Paul Fink, this is his second time to be our event sponsor. Paul Fink, the Maverick Millionaire. All right. This guy, I come to him about doubling your income because that's what he does. He teaches people how to double your income. It took me a lot longer than a year to double my income, so I can't teach you that. Go to somebody who does it in a year, like Paul. That's what he does. Then I've got specific speakers, all right? Three specific subjects. Number one, trademarks. I wonder who I got for that one. Mm, let me think. <laughs> Been trying to get him for a year and a half since we started this conference and finally locked him in until we were available on the same dates. All right. And I've got to got, I'm going to interview his inspiring daughter on the stage. Just saying. We're both uh, very excited about it. Yeah. Yes. Second inspirational. All right. In specifics, Jake Ballantine. He has the speaker authors coaches Facebook group. This guy came out of nowhere and built a Facebook group with a couple thousand people at a, out of nowhere because hmm. he knows how to build community and he applied that to Facebook. He's going to share with you how to build a community using Facebook. Very good at it. And third, the guy who's actually writing all of my Facebook ads is going to share with you how to write Facebook ads. <laughs> wow. So most of the people who are coming to the event, all right, are going to be buying tickets through the ads that the guy who's going to teach you how to write the ads that got you to buy it. Anyway, <laughs> I think about that concept just a little bit. So of course, my wife's going to share something, all right, about, you know, building relationships to build sales. She has been actually selling to hospitals about outsourcing their gift shops to her company for five years now. Mm -hmm. She's going to share how she got into some of the most unique spots with CEOs of hospitals to get them to listen to her. She's going to share that from the stage as well. All right. As well as I got a couple of my mastermind members who get up and they share inspiring things with you to help you and your business online, offline relationships, friendships, and then we're going to have a bunch of fun things happen. I've got the top, and I do mean the top tribute guitarist in all of Dallas, Texas, is going to perform for us. Wow. It's a surprise guest, but you go Google who the top one is. You'll probably figure it out. He's my neighbor. That's how I got him. All right. He lives two doors over. Nice. <laughs> so, so he's been a friend of mine for a couple of years, and I'm excited to have him on the stage. All right. He's a guitar player that if I turn the lights off, you'd think it was the real person from the band playing. Wow. He's that good. So that's all the inspiring things about the event. It's a three day event. It is one of the most unique in the industry. I will tell you this is if you attended the last one, the one you're coming to this time is a totally new con concept. It is new, new content, new concept, new, new people. You've got to be there. So if for whatever reason people don't, want to come or can't come, but they really want to work with you directly, where do they go? You can find out a lot about me. Go to nottompetty.com. <laughs> we I am that. not kidding. I have that website with a whole <laughs> video about why I was called Tom Petty. And it teaches you some stuff on marketing as well. There's a video there for you to watch. And uh, there's a, a, a form for you to connect with me if you want to connect on that. Nottompetty.com not tom petty.com and yes i'm not tom petty i'm sorry he's passed away and i miss him there you go i think that's a great ending yeah it was great to have you man thank you man i appreciate you guys tim and i would love to hear from you 
What did you learn today that you're going to implement in your business? What's your biggest takeaway? Leave your comment below and share this interview with your friends. Now, get your ticket to the blog and video conference right now. It will be a great opportunity for us to connect in person. As always, please like and subscribe. And if you think you deserve to be on the show because you have a kick-ass brand, email me at next at kickassbrandshow.com. And until then, I will see you. You, I'm talking to you. I will see you in the next video.